Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode I've made the change to the nitrogen system, uh, the atmospheric leak system, uh, so that whereas the hitchhiker storage container previously had a duration of 80 days, it now basically has 800 days, so by a factor of 10. And the reason I did that was because, well we had seen that there's actually a factor of 42 gap between the real numbers for the ISS and uh, what we have here in Kerbalism, but uh, part of that was due to uh, airlock stuff and other activities that aren't supposed to happen while Kerbals aren't on board, but I've left those in. So that factor is still in, but that left us with uh, two other components. One was the fact that the Kerbal, uh, Kerbal day is only six hours instead of 24 hours, so that's a factor of four, and then also the fact that they uh, had a bad estimate for the surface area of the ISS. Uh, so if we take a look at the configuration file, there's default.config in profiles in Kerbalism, this atmospheric leak entry, Atmo leaks, um, I just added a zero here. And the reason uh, they had this bad estimate for the surface area of the ISS is because they estimated it as a sphere instead of as a sequence of cylinders, which is what it is. And so I demonstrated my calculation for that. And so that's a factor of 2.5. And so if you take the factor of 4 because of Kerbin's day, multiply by 2.5 for this uh, error, then you get the factor of 10. And that's convenient enough. So we're leaving in this extra amount for other activities because I think a factor of 10 is sufficient for me. I, I, don't, I don't need the whole correction, if you will. Uh, a factor of 10 is enough. I have to admit I'm a little bit befuddled about what I should do at this point because they're not really giving me very interesting contracts. Um, since we're gonna be exploring Ike and building a new orbital station around Ike, I'll pick up the science day from space around Ike, that makes sense, and has long duration anyway. And um, we do have this harvest food from space though, and so we need to set up a greenhouse, and I guess the thing to do would be to build a new orbital station around Minmus. That would certainly pay for it. But it's got some hefty requirements, and we already have a station around Minmus. Maybe that's gonna work out a little bit better with the change to the atmospheric leak system, hopefully. Uh, so we wanna send some nitrogen to it. Uh, but of course, this requires a new station with an antenna docking port and can generate power. It wants a station that can support 15 Kerbals, plus a research lab, and the 6,000 units of liquid fuel, and it wants three pilots on board. So that's a lot, and uh, I mean, we could build that piecemeal, but I could just send it up all at the same time. Um, it'd probably be more time efficient to send it all up at the same time, and you know, um, time is money. Uh, so yeah, but anyway, this is the most interesting contract that they're gonna give me that I don't have to wait for a transfer window for, and we're, We've got a while until the next Duna transfer window, so I'll pick this up and position a satellite. Well, this requires it to be uncrewed. Otherwise, we could probably do this with that station, uh, as long as we had a mystery goo uh, thermometer and accelerometer, and we put it into that orbit first. It's a pretty darn heavy satellite. I don't know if that's worth it or not. Science day from space around Minmus. Um, probably eventually, <laughs> but we, we can only have seven contracts right now. I could upgrade the building, but let's complete this mission first. All the rescues seem to be around the moon, but we're not doing moon stuff right now. So I don't know about this. I think we'll just do, if I wanted to do that, I'd do it with a separate probe. I don't want to do it with the mission. Now, basically what I'm contemplating is just sending the three pilots along, but we only have three pilots, so maybe that's not such a good idea. Uh, one engineer is assigned to our ghillie mission, that's about it. We could hire another pilot, but nah, I don't think so. Especially since we've got a max of 12 right now. So, we need to upgrade this, and we need to upgrade that as well. They're both 282,000, but I want to complete this mission first. So we're not going to send the Kerbals yet though. We'll send them on a separate mission. All right, well, this is probably a colossally bad idea. Uh, probably comfy for the Kerbals, and we've got a lot of redundancy, and I'll go over it, but 
in order to lift this station to Minmus, and it's still tight on Delta V, uh, we're using seven mainsails. <laughs> and uh, there is fuel cross-feeding even into that core. But all right, let's 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 go from the top and see what we've got here. Well, the reaction wheel failed on our other Minmus station, so we've got two now. Um, I decided to keep them both standard, but uh, and that's because uh, making them high quality is a cost of 3,000, which is a lot. So uh, as a redundancy to those reaction wheels, we've got these RCS thrusters for control if we need them. That's probably for the best. Anyway, as far as supplies are concerned, we should put a few Kerbals in to demonstrate. And you can see we have the seating capacity, mainly because we've got the hitchhiker storage container for four, research lab for two, and then all of these crew cabins for another 12. So 18 altogether, which is overdoing it, but symmetry was what it was. We're not keeping these Kerbals inside, but let's say five Kerbals. We've got basically three years of food. Water, it says perpetual. Uh, I guess that's because of the recycler and the greenhouse. Uh, not sure. But we've got a fairly large supply container here. I thought I'd put enough water in here to make sure that was also three years, but apparently it's perpetual. Uh, we're producing more than we consume. That's That takes talent. Um, Oxygen, about three years. Uh, carbon dioxide, perpetual. And um, we're carrying a little bit just in case we need it for the greenhouse. And I'm carrying a little bit of ammonia as well. And we have capacity just in case we generate some and we want to store it. Uh, so we're thinking about that now. And nitrogen, three years. But finally, the nitrogen being three years is just two of these containers plus what's already in the cabins. So that's good. Um, and so supply-wise, that's what we've got. Um, duration, I mean, living space, modest. Comfort, modest. Pressurized, yes. And this is for five Kerbals right now. If we put more in, uh, that will diminish. Uh, but then living space will be poor. So really, uh, it's good for five. Well, good for four, actually. Modest comfort there and ideal for three. Comfort remains modest though. Hmm, I wonder how to improve that. I didn't want to go with a spinny ring thing because that made things bulky and I'd need a fairing. Right now we don't need a fairing. At least I think not. Uh, radiation wise, we're full up on radiation shielding. We've got, and it's pretty heavy too. Let's take a look at MacJeb. Uh, right now the whole thing up here is 94 uh, tons if we include the Delta V 77 tons dry and if we take off the shielding here 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 and here we'll see that that's 15 tons less so it's 15 tons of radiation shielding but I'm not taking any chances because my Kerbals... I'll look for a NASA paper to <laughs> reduce the shielding, but uh, we'll, we'll do that later. Um, that's probably more for when I want to use Kerbalism in Realism Overhaul than anything else. But yeah, this is some pretty extreme shielding we're talking about here. Um, yeah, and then it, the contract required us to carry 6,000 units of liquid fuel. And so here's our 6,000... Oh, it's actually... 5,600 down here and then we've got another 540 up here so that adds up we don't have the three pallets on just yet and speaking of which let's remove yeah we've removed everybody why is it okay curious all right so we've got the research lab I threw on the greenhouse because I want to test that that's gonna be my main purpose around here and of course we do have a contract for generating food in space generating I say harvesting they say um, we've got solar panels and everything. As far as redundancy, uh, it says 10 for life support. Ignore the 45 for propulsion. That's because of the lower stages. 6 for power generation, 7 for attitude control, and 5 for communication. I deliberately, because communication was the lowest, I deliberately added more antennae just in case. Um, so, and by the way, our treadmill quality is high here in the hitchhiker storage container. That was fairly cheap. Uh, 
unlike the reaction wheel, which was another 3,000, that was just uh, about 400 more. ECLSS quality high is expensive, 2,500, but it's probably for the best. And um, yeah, quality high on the research lab as well. That was a little bit more of an expense. So it's an expensive launch. It's a daring launch in many ways. Um, in fact, yeah, I mean, we put strutting, I'm worried about all sorts of things. We do have backup propulsion. So the main propulsion on here is a cheetah. And then backup is the spark engines. And I only just realized that they have these mounting options now. So I'm just going with this mounting option. Not that it needs to be really small, but I just wanted to try it out for once. Mm, we got these main solar panels. It seems like it's okay with that, but I feel like because of the cost of this, I might as well slap on some more solar panels. I mean, why not? So just for the research lab, I'm going to put four more. I mean, successfully fulfilling the contract will pay for this, so there is that. It's quite a tower of power. Yeah, it beats me how it fit in the VAB in the first place. All right, throttle up, SAS on, and I guess smart ASS. All right, ignition, and launch. Well, it's going up, and it's not wiggling too much just yet. It's a good start. Wow, the sound of the mainsails just changed dramatically, and I was worried something horrible happened. So apparently Kerbalism does work with the USI mods, except for USI Live Support, of course. Uh, but I will test that. And ultimately, the reason I'm interested in that is also because I intend to use USI parts in a Realism Overhaul install, and I want Kerbalism in there as well. And that will have to do with uh, Mars. There will be Mars things going on. Okay. And separation. Booster separation is fine. Well, I think we have more Delta V on the launcher than I thought we did, so that's good. There's a poodle stage here. Let's see, let's decouple the nose cone. Alright, it's floating off. And we'll be tilting up when we do the burn, so that shouldn't be a problem. Let's yeah, let me keep the solar panels in just in case the nose cone does come back at us. And I need to not have solar panels sticking out at that point. <laughs> Alright. Now there goes the nose cone. Safely away. So basically this stage will handle the first half of the burn and then the poodle will finish it off. Okay, poodle time. Poodle doesn't really contribute a whole lot of delta V, it's just like 500 meters per second. And it takes a lot of fuel to do it, but then again, this is a very heavy thing. Not the most efficient use of a poodle ever. Fortunately, while the poodle stage doesn't have much delta V, it has enough delta V, so it will be enough to complete this burn. Then we'll probably separate it off even though it has about 10 meters per second left. Just to make it easier to maneuver because our reaction wheels are pretty taxed. It looks like it doesn't have quite as much delta V as I was anticipating, but okay, that's going away. All right, we'll do a mid-course maneuver, but without this stage. We should tentatively line up so that we can meet up with Minimus Station 1 and perhaps, you know, create a mega station eventually. Oh, uh, I saw some oxygen consumption. But it stopped. There was some oxygen consumption. You know, it occurs to me. Well, I mean, this is so heavy though, but. We could just send this over to Ike, or we could send Minmus Station 1 over to Ike, but then it needs a research lab. But we, well, no, but 
it'd have to be a new station built after the contract was accepted. And I think we accepted this contract after we sent up Minimus Station 1. Yeah, if we wanted to send this over to Ike, we could. But maybe it's just too big. Can we start the greenhouse? Oh, looks like we can start the green. I was worried about the animation. I didn't know how it animated. So I was worried about where I was going to put the docking ports and all. So that it, they wouldn't get in the way of the animation. I felt, I, I just looking at the model, I went, it's going to be animated somehow. <laughs> but I didn't know how it was going to be animated. Probably a good idea to have radiation shielding, though I don't know how you have radiation shielding on this open grid natural lighting area here, okay, because you're bound to get radiation like that, aren't you? Surely there's no lead shielding there anyway. Well, it's looking like we'll successfully put this into orbit around Minmus, which I'm sort of surprised by. This could have gone horribly wrong <laughs> a number of ways but I tried to be careful this time just occurred to me that maybe I should name stations with greenhouses after rivers you know river valleys famous river valleys that grow a lot of food I'm thinking Euph Euphrates station for this so I'm just gonna go for it it's not like I'm gonna come up with a better name okay That'll do. I don't want it to go below 20 kilometers. So 32 by 20. And uh, we're not going to rendezvous this with uh, Minima Station 1 just yet. We're going to bring over our crew of three pilots. All of our pilots. Putting all of our pilots in the same basket for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why they need pilots here. Three pilots on the station. Why? Why do we need that? But anyway. That's what they want, that's what they'll get. So let's send them over and complete that mission. Okay, well, if we're gonna have a three person crew, I'm just gonna get the Mark 1 3 command pod. Uh, might as well. Now, of course, we do already have this pomegranate re entry module, but I don't trust it, even though it has a crew capacity of three and it's light. And of course, we could put a fairing around it to deal with the aerodynamic issues. But I don't trust it because it, it isn't actually shaped like this Soyuz Descent module. <laughs> That's the orbital module. That's the part that burns up in the atmosphere. I don't trust it. I can't, I can't do that. Vostok was uh, a, a round thing like that. But uh, um, the Soyuz Descent module is shaped differently. So, no, sorry. I'll pass. I'll use this. And besides, I like the Mooner Excursion module as well. Um, yep, yep, that, that'll be interesting. And especially this Mark II lander can that can actually convert itself into a, into a rover can. That's a fancy thing that they added that I think might be good to add to other parts. Um, for instance, the Mark I lander can. But the Mark II lander can, I'll just unlock it right now, has this uh, alternate shape. Ah, there we go. The rover shape. Which is completely different. And it's like the only box-like pod in this entire business. I wonder, uh, does it have a note on the tail? It, it does. Hmm, you can make quite a train with this sort of thing. I don't know, I, I'm just fascinated by these sorts of things. Alright, this is just a fascinating shape all on its own. It's a unique shape, and I like unique shapes. But anyway... Let me build a spacecraft using the Mark 1-3 command pod. Come on. Okay, so our crew transfer vehicle is called Bopper. That's just the first name that popped into my head. And I've tried to make it safe. We've got two parachutes and both of them have a high quality. So that's an added expense, obviously. Um, we've got solar panels on the pod. We've got solar panels on the service module. Service module, I mean, the Delta V is a little bit tight. But uh, we do have a backup mod propellant system so that uh, we can use that instead to return. But if, you, if we are just on the mod propellant system, we need to come back. Basically, it has enough delta V to bring us back home, but that's about it. And it should be able to bring us back regardless of where we happen to be. 
Uh, well, yeah, so that is the idea. And we've got uh, tiny little oxygen containers there. And uh, all together we have 42 days of oxygen, uh, 41 days of water, 44 days of food. And that's just because how it fits into the, the containers. And stress-wise, it's cramped. I mean, comfort is poor. What can you do? Uh, but they're trying to get to a station. They can last for a year, according to this. Uh, so no humidity control, but scrubbing and pressurization are good. And as far as reliability, redundancy, life support, not so good. So, yeah, we are relying on the pod's life support. Uh, attitude, well, I mean, some of it is down here. But uh, attitude control, good. Communication, propulsion, and such. Um, we've got the supply container under the docking port here, and also a battery. And, yeah, other than that, it's a skiff at the center, and then Reliant engines on the side. And that is how it is. Oh, and on the heat shield, we have half the ablator at the moment. Any other key features? Not really. I decided to use the, the Bayer version of the Spark engine, so that's what we have on the side there. I'm getting fond of that. And with that, let us bring it out, bring out, bring it outside with three pilots, all three of our pilots. <laughs> and see if it works. I swear, Philippe is looking different than I remember him. But maybe that was a different Philippe. Might have been a different series. Oh, we only have half the shielding on the pod. And that is because it was getting a bit heavy. It was originally supposed to have two of the Reliant boosters, but we have three now. Yeah, it's pretty expensive all around. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. I tried using SRBs, but the SRBs just weren't working for me, as far as giving me the Delta V I needed. Also thrust, I mean we can't fit the really big ones on here, because they're too tall. And the shorter ones didn't give quite the right mix of things. The combination of Delta V and Thrust. Though, we might be a little bit wigglier than I want to be. Because the Reliance don't gimbal, of course. You know, our combined pilot skills should probably prevent us from wiggling too much. There we go. SAS is better than Smart ASS. Okay, booster set. I put Separatrons on even though I didn't think I really needed them for those boosters. Mainly because I really, really wanted to make sure they left. Okay, let's shut down there temporarily. I want to get rid of the nose cone and make sure it deorbits. Oh, that's why I was costing more than I thought. It's because we haven't made orbit yet. That might be important. And it's a little bit weird, because we're, we're actually still in the atmosphere, but... Uh, and we're pointing down. We're pointing down. Let's wait a bit. Okay, let's start now. Not that I feel great about this. Alright, let's see about the whole rendezvous business. We want to get to Euphrates Station. Yeah, that'll be close enough. Separation 1.3 kilometers, relative speed 228 meters per second. It's 8.7 uh, meter per second adjustment in Minmus SOI, and then we'll have that encounter. Even though we've got a pretty bad inclination compared to the station. Looks good. Everything appears to be all right. There we go, under half a kilometer. I think we should just leave it there to be safe. Always forget to put lights on the stations. Okay, render range. Minimus station, I just need you to point at me. Oh, wait, 
there's no control over Mimma Station right now. We're in the dark. I mean, as far as why are we in the dark? Oh, electric charge is gone. Well, shucks. We'll need to put a new module on with more electric charge. There's no way electric charge should have diminished. It has the huge solar panels and just uh, in the time it's on the dark side of Minmus, it shouldn't lose all electric charge. Oh, maybe it's because I started the greenhouse or something. That's probably why. Well, this is a good time for caps lock. Okay, we are docked. So, have we filled? Yes, we have fulfilled new orbital station around Minmus. 25 bonus scions, but 500,000 funds, which pays for all this. And uh, now, how's our power and nitrogen and everything? Uh, power's back. I mean, from what I see here, it needs about 1.4 kilowatts. Hmm, that might be a lot on the dark side. So, did, have we generated food? It says harvest food in space, but I don't know what constitutes a harvest. I guess we have to wait. We have to finish the harvest. So, we have to wait the 192 days. Okay. We'll probably need some extra space on here to carry the food. I do want the Kerbals to actually stay on board for a while though, but yeah, we can dock them on the side. I, I don't know, maybe, well, yeah, let's just get to, well, Mimis Station 1 is right there. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Um, so I need to shut down some engines. I really need Ship Manifest or Attack Fuel Balancer in order to dump the huge fuel load we're carrying all the liquid fuel that they required us to carry that I don't really need. Okay, that'll get us within render range. We do have to make sure we still have fuel to get home. Although we can use the fuel down here to refuel that, of course. But we don't have an infinite amount here. Yeah, they didn't say we had to bring our pilots back, so I'm probably gonna have them stay on here for quite a while to test it out. Maybe we'll hire another pilot, or maybe we'll just send our other Kerbals out with probe cores. I mean, probably on our Duna mission we're gonna send an engineer. For the same reason we did to EVE. Okay, we'll just be on RCS now. Speaking of which, when are we uh, getting that Kerbal back? One year and 94 days still, so quite a quite a time. How is that Kerbal doing? Mm, Gilly Mission 1. Bill. 6% stress, 5% radiation. No other problems. Plenty of supplies. Well, if Bill only gets like 5% radiation at Eve, and Eve's closer to to the sun and everything, maybe Valentina can go to Duna. But later on, again, I think we'll be sending an engineer out there first. Honestly though, the RCS on here wasn't really meant to dock things together. I don't know what kind of control we have over Minmus Station 1 right now. Well, while this is turning, let's see. Um, we've got electric charge, we've got communication. We've got a busted probe core there, I mean, uh, inline stabilizer there, but we've still got the reaction wheel in that pod. That's a Minmus probe, that's Euphrates Station. Okay point towards Euphrates station. We could move the pod off and dock them nose to nose or I could dock this on the side of Euphrates station. If I dock it to the side then Euphrates station is not gonna be able to maneuver itself much at all because then it'll be imbalanced. If I dock it on the nose then 
all visiting craft will have to dock elsewhere, which I guess is fine. And that ball doesn't seem to be oriented right. Am I controlling from the wrong place? Oh, that's why. Okay, I was controlling from the wrong place. We're gonna have the Kerbals separate off temporarily as the stations attempt to dock. Okay, off we go. Okay, it'll just hold steady off to the side there. That should be clear enough. In retrospect, since this is the only side with RCS thrusters, there's no way we could dock the other one on the side of this. It's not like we have a whole lot of mod propellant on here either. Okay, that should be close enough. I don't know. We're gonna have to slow down a smidge. Yeah, drain is like three per second here. Let me just... Well, I, I don't want to stop it from growing. Surprised the plants didn't die when it lost power though. I guess it wouldn't. Well, no, maybe they would. Depends on how well climate controlled the whole thing is, even when it doesn't have power. Insulated. Okay, well, we've joined together. We had two units of my propellant left. All right, 133 tons in Minmus orbit now. All right, let's get the pod docked to it. It's now all called Euphrates Station. Okay, caps lock again. Lag-wise, we're not doing too badly. Once we dock up, we'll see how many parts the whole thing is. Okay, we need to figure out a place to dock. Maybe while the Kerbals are on board, we should keep the greenhouse off because we clearly need to add more solar panels and such to make that, well, not solar panels, but um, battery power, more battery power, maybe fuel cells. Gotta say the reaction wheel glowing orange red there sort of gives flavor to the place. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind that at all somehow. Okay, we have docked. All right, so there we are. Let's see how many parts all this is. Uh, 235 parts right now. Not the largest station ever, but still interesting. And looking good, no obvious lag. I mean, there's a little bit of yellow, but you know, fairly manageable. Okay, so yeah, uh, just for safety's sake, I'm going to uh, disable the greenhouse, unfortunately. We'll have wasted a few growing days, but we need solar panelry. And so maybe if I remember next time, we'll send some over. And we've, we're probably gonna skip Trez and just go straight for that Duna window. It's a while, but basically we're gonna test to see whether these three are gonna be able to survive on this station for the time being for about a year and see if there's any problem with that that's going to be an important test so yeah that'll be the plan we'll send some solar panels over and then take care of that duna window all right so with that i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time